Hi guys, Yannick here for Yannick's Photo School, and today's post is inspired by the results of the Black and White Spider Awards that that uh, came out last week. Um, basically, um, uh, I invite you to click on the link here in this uh, uh, tutorial for the Spider Awards, so that you can go see the wonderful, wonderful photography that's there. It'll be very, very inspiring for your future photography. I can bet on that. Now, this post is all about black and white and how to convert a color photo into black and white. And for an example, we have this lovely photo here of my 91-year-old grandpa. And um, uh, basically, we're going to convert him into black and white. Now, the first, uh, we're going to look at four different approaches to black and white conversion in Photoshop CS3 or above. The first one is grayscale. The second one is desaturation. The third one is the channel mixer. And last but not least, the black and white conversion tool, which is new in Photoshop CS3. Now, if you have Photoshop CS2 and below, you won't have this last option. All right, the first one, grayscale. I think you guys, most of you might know this one. It's pretty basic. You go into image, mode, and grayscale. And there you go. You've just converted your image into black and white. Now, if you want to tweak it, you can go into your levels or curves adjustments, dodge it, burning, burn it, do whatever you want with it. All right, let me bring it back to color. The next option, image uh, adjustments, desaturate. Boom, there you go. Very similar to grayscale. Uh, the difference with that is that you can only you can use this if you have multiple layers. You can uh, desaturate just certain layers. With grayscale, it'll convert all your layers to grayscale. So that's the advantage of uh, the desaturation one instead of the grayscale. So those are two very very basic ones, but also two that. Uh, lack control over what you do with your black and white images. The next two are more advanced and give you more control over how you convert your image and are my uh, preferred options when I convert my images to black and white. Again into image, adjustments, and channel mixer. Now you should have that in uh, most versions of Photoshop. And this is the one that I actually use a lot because that's the one I kind of uh, uh, grew up with, with within Photoshop CS and CS2 uh, and CS3 now. Now with the, the next one I'll show you after, I haven't played much with it yet, so uh, bear with me there. So basically, um, in this channel mixer dialog box, what you'll need to do first is click the monochrome box right at the bottom left corner. And by doing that, you'll see your image switching to black and white. Now, what's important here, you see the red channel, the green and the blue channels, the basically the RGB channels, and they come up to a total of 100%. That's really, really important to know this because um, you kind of want to keep it to roughly around 100% or else you'll start getting some clipping in your image. And when I mean what I mean by clipping is that you'll have some blown out areas or black clipping as well, um, pure black areas. Maybe you want that, maybe not. Um, by default, it'll give you this percentage of each of the channel and you can basically play with them and as you can see you have some clipping occurring here in the hair and the skin if I boost up the red. Uh, so what you want to do is reduce the next color to around 100% and you can see that all the clippings is gone. And you can do that with all the channels and tweak your image just the way you want uh, until you get your desired uh, black and white effect. Uh, it's a little bit longer than desaturation or grayscale, but you got m a lot more control and you can uh, make some really dramatic black and whites using the channel mixer this way. They also have some presets where you can start off with, with this uh, preset drop down menu here at the top. Uh, you can select from infrared, the blue, the green, the orange, red, and yellow filters. And that can be a base for you to start. You see the orange one starts at 50-50, nothing in the blue. So you can start with that. And that would be the channel mixer, which is my favorite one, which is the one I use most often. Um, let me just cancel that. 
Last but not least is the new one that's in CS3 called Black and White. And you'll find it right here. Now the shortcut key for that is a bit long, so if you plan on using this one, you might want to redo your shortcut key. An Alt Shift Control B, whew, you might as well just go into your menu, it'll be as fast. All right, clicking on that, of course by default it uh, converts your image into black and white. And uh, you have your channels right here. Uh, now instead of RGB, we got your reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, and magenta. So you can really, really play with all those in different percentages. Uh, of course, you got some presets here. Uh, high contrast blue filter, high contrast red, and that would be a, your base start. So you can choose a filter that's close to where you plan on going, uh, and then tweaking it after that using the different color channels. Now for skin, you'll usually play with yellows and reds and, uh, since skin has those colors in them, and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, there is a tint option down here. If you want to add a sepia tone or uh, any other color tone, which is pretty neat, so you're, you're kind of getting the, the one color type of image, and you can play with saturation on that as well. And that's a pretty cool feature in the black and white option, even though it's not black and white. And there you go. Those are the four color options in Photoshop CS3. In CS2 and below, you'll have three of those. And in CS3 and above, you'll have this lovely black and white feature. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on converting your images to black and white. This is Yannick Chauvin signing out, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.